This is a view inside the station's Destiny Laboratory module with astronauts Clay Anderson and Sonny Williams working at the robotic workstation. Together they will be maneuvering the station robotic arm into posi position atop its uh, mobile platform so that that platform can be maneuvered uh, later today. This is a view on the outside of the International Space Station showing the space station robotic arm. Sounds good. The arm being maneuvered into a park position on top of its uh, mobile base system, securing it in place so that that uh, base system on the mobile transporter can be moved later today down the railway on the uh, station's truss structure, moving to a new work site uh, on top of the new S3, the Starward 3 truss element, and then back to its uh, current location at the work site on top of the Starward 1 or S1 truss. This is a view inside the station's Destiny Laboratory module with astronauts Sunny William and Clay Anderson to uh, station crew members going through a handover from Williams to Anderson, serving as the flight engineer two for Expedition 15 and the NASA Space Station Science Officer. The pressure in the crew lock section of the Quest airlock continuing to drop slowly. In the uh, final steps of the preparations for today's spacewalk. Looks like it's pretty light. The hatch on the Quest Airlock is open. You can see it here in this view at the top of the screen. Yeah. O2, rate 3.5. SO4, D is 6160. Battery volts DC 19.2. Battery amps 3.2. As the crew members uh, confirm the readings on their spacesuits before exiting the airlock, this is a view from one of the helmet cameras on one of the spacesuits looking out to uh, the hatch at the earth below. Motor water pressure, 14.6. Data combo, battery volts, 32.0. And my pressure gauge is at 4.3. Gentlemen, I'd like to hand you off at this time to JR, and you guys have a great EVA. Okay, nice job, Danny. Thanks, Danny. Okay, and uh, we've got the thermal covers open, and we're ready for you to egress the airlock. Pat? Good matter work. Astronaut Pat Forrester, the first to exit the airlock hatch. This is a view from his uh, helmet camera video. Okay, and you'll be picking up your 85-foot safety tether, and that's the one that's immediately to your left. All right, copy. And Atlantis Houston. This view now from uh, Forrester's helmet camera. Blockage. Uh, I'll let you know when we're ready to hit play again. Okay, I think that's about 90 percent of it, uh, but uh, we'll just leave it right there in the machine and just give me a holler, please. Great, Level thank you. Seven, J J counter three, three point five is set. Okay, and that'll be uh, about nine turns, twenty. Copy. Astronaut Steve Swanson is continuing to remove three launch restraints on the joint there. While astronaut uh, Pat Forrester works at the uh, drive lock assembly number two to help Mission Control Houston confirm its uh, installation and op uh, operation to rotate the joint. Uh, 
we can verify there is a neutral indication in the motor housing window. And on your go, we'll continue with both ops. JR, we copy, and you have a go. Okay, copy that. And uh, Pat, first one up will be uh, Bolt 1 Charlie, which is going to be on the right side as you're looking at it. I see it. And when you're set and ready, I'll get some uh, B, uh, PGT settings for you. Astronaut Pat Forrester has confirmed that the drive lock assembly did uh, change into a neutral position after commanded by the Falcon expert uh, flight controller here in the station flight control room. Need to come across to the other side there. Okay. Tell me, tell me like, uh, like that, is that good? Yeah, just keep, keep an eye on me. I just kind of want to keep my tether running. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm just going to get our uh, four Bravos in the bag. Um, in the bag, five. four Bravo. Got it. Swanee, and you're heading for number five, I think. Yeah, that's five. We got a red on it. Just good looking for the clearance. Okay, sounds great. And big picture, while Pat's getting in position here, Swanee, you're probably going to be a little bit ahead. So what I'm thinking, and you guys let me know what you think, is to move the APFR from S328 over to the drag line keel pin. I'll get that done after this uh, launcher strength. How about that? Sounds like a plan. Now one hour and 31 uh, minutes into today's spacewalk, this view of astronaut Pat Forrester just securing all the bolts in place on the drive lock assembly number two on the solar alpha rotary joint. The uh, flight control team here in the International Space Station flight control room will command that uh, assembly to engage into the joint connecting uh, the teeth of the drive lock assembly to the gear of the rotary joint. And Pat, we'll just be hanging out here for a couple of minutes till they get the uh, drive command uh, initiated, and then we'll be checking for uh, pinion gear meshing with the uh, bull gear. Sounds good. I'm in a position to watch the uh, uh, indicator, the drive indicator first, and then I'll move over and check out the teeth engage. Okay. And Swanee, when you get there, it'll be a clocking of six, and I've got the rest of them for you when you're ready. Clocking of six, just verify, please, with five. It is with five. Thanks. Atlantis Houston for EVA, we've sent the command. Copy, thanks, Megan. And I see it, JR, and we have a D in the window. Okay. I verify good tooth engage, and uh, if you want some WBS, just give me some direction. And uh, I think the visual verification is good. There's uh, nothing here. Break Houston, uh, Atlantis, if you concur, we'll have Pat reinstall the DLA-2 cover. JR, we concur. We're ready for that. Okay, Pat, we are ready to put the cover back on. In work. Astronaut Pat Forrester has uh, completed the installation of the drive lock assembly number two and helped Mission Control uh, confirm its activation and engagement on the uh, solar alpha rotary joint. This one of two of the drive lock assemblies that uh, rotate the joint. Pat, uh, imagine you probably heard me talking to Swanee uh, and the big picture. What I'm having him do is come over to 6 Bravo, which is uh, right above your head. 
And uh, what I'm thinking is to have him break torque and you follow up with uh, PGT and remove. How does that sound to you? Sounds good. Got one more tether to get. And we'll do a quick glove inspection and then uh, you can just hang there for a second while we'll Pat's there while Swanee breaks the torque. Sounds good. This is now a view from a camera on the outside of the International Space Station looking at the forward side of the S3 truss element. Astronaut Steve Swanson in view as he and astronaut Pat Forrester are removing the keel pin that's extending just uh, up above and to the right of Swanson's uh, head in this view. They'll rotate that into the truss and out of the way so that the mobile transporter can move up and down the railway of the truss there. This is a view from the camera on astronaut Steve Swanson's spacesuit. This is Mission Control Houston now three hours and 42 minutes into today's spacewalk. Astronaut Steve Swanson translating and moving back to the Quest airlock to stow a bag of equipment and supplies from the first part of the spacewalk. Astronaut Pat Forrester working on clearing the railway for the mobile transporter, the station robotic arm platform. Atlantis Houston for EVA. Go ahead, Megan. JR, Pat can leave the APFR in its current config if we can just get the current settings, please. That's great news, Pat, if you could just read them off. Okay, it's a clocking of seven. Papa, Papa. Bravo. Six. Okay, 
Yeah, copy seven, Papa Papa, Bravo six for the Xenix. So and can. we're good to go. I'm in position to swing this thing around the Foxtrot if they want it. I'd say just leave it. Let's press with installing the T-handle tool. All right. Houston copies, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston. Today's spacewalk by Pat Forrester and Steve Swanson. Now four hours, 39 minutes in duration. Just a look at uh, Steve Swanson uh, on the left and Pat Forrester on the right. Toward the work area. Swanson working with the installation of some local area network cabling for computer systems on the uh, exterior of the Unity module. This is a view from uh, Pat Forrester's uh, helmet camera as he works with the um, micrometeoroid and orbital debris shield that was removed uh, earlier on the mission by Jim Riley as he was installing a hydrogen vent valve on the outside of the Destiny Laboratory module for the oxygen generation system. Pat Forrester uh, having a look at uh, the panel that was tethered in place when Riley was unable to get its connectors uh, sink back down, he's retrieved uh, from the airlock a uh, T-handle tool that we can see here at the lower portion of your screen that'll be used to try to engage those bolts. I'm gonna get it under these cables and then we'll try and get the end under down there. A little bit more. Trying to go slowly. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let you get in position up there. All right. The main thing we got to do is get that, those ends down, those tabs. Yeah, we get this right out of the way. Jr. I have got two rents, one adjustable. I've got the key handle, and all I think I'm supposed to have. Right. Yeah. Okay, guys. Let's uh, head on towards the lab and let's get that one uh, cinched down. And uh, I think we'll be calling it a day. Really. Fast, it? Uh, yeah. What's the best way to at this point to go fall apart, or should I go back to the front side, uh, back around the front, and head over? Go ahead, Megan. DJ, uh, we show Swanee still in the area for the uh, node handrail 120 removal if he has time to get it. Does he need to come out here to the lab? Okay, it's totally your call. We'll start, slow him down. Uh, we're just trying to hurry him back inside. Uh, stand by, uh, Swanee. And we think just Pat needs to go and work on the vent valve. Okay, Pat, we're going to send you up to do the vent valve uh, MMOD and a valve open and swine. Stand by one second. He could, you know, he's right over there. He could pick up that uh, oh, handrail. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Hand yeah. yeah, that's what we're talking about. And Swanee, if you want to do that, we'll pick up handrail 120. Oh, my goodness. This is Mission Control Houston. Steve Swanson and Pat Forrester still outside the International Space Station on their uh, second spacewalk of the mission, the fourth overall spacewalk of the mission. They're unable to uh, get the, the latches engaged on that micrometeoroid and orbital debris panel on the end of the uh, Unity module. With 
345 foot pounds or inch pounds. And so uh, tethered it down so that uh, it won't go any place and still be available to protect the space station if for debris or a micrometeoroid were to come uh, at that particular panel. Atlantis, you have a go. Outstanding. Okay, first thing up, Pat, open the vent valve for us. Pat Forrester being instructed to move on to his next task, which is uh, opening the hydrogen vent valve that was installed by Jim Riley earlier on the mission. Clay Anderson and Sonny Williams have been working on installing the plumbing on the inside of the space station so that they can later on in this increment activate the oxygen generation system. Okay, that is open. Thank you, sir. Now, JR, from the picture, I think we're happy with this one. You're probably looking. And then I think this one, they want me to put one more to it and get it inboard under the spitz bag if I can. Would you agree with that? That is correct. And I think what we want to do is uh, shift from uh, right where your, where your left hand is and across. Yeah, so we want to come off a handrail 270 right there. Okay. Bring it across down to uh, by the spits down the handrail, which is underneath the spits cable bag. It's 280. I agree. They're going to hand those in to you. Okay. Try to get my reel to reel up here. Now that one's just a little sticky. Yeah, it goes. Then I'll take them off from here. And for the folks on the ground, that's uh, number 28 on the 85. It's uh, been a little bit slow in retraction. Uh, I got him, Pat. All right. There they are. Thank you, Pat. All right, Jr. those are handed in. Okay, I see uh, everything done outside there, Pat, if you concur. I do. Okay, it's time for you to come on in. Okay, I'm taking one last look, and if I could, just say Happy Father's Day. It's been a great way to spend it. I want to say Happy Father's Day to my dad, my father-in-law, and to being a father to my two sons, so thanks. I to echo those same ones. Thanks, Pat, for reminding me. That's nice. I guess I'll be to my dad and kick the... Absolutely. A lot of fathers on this flight, and we're all enjoying a great Father's Day. Okay, and today was the uh, fourth EVA that we had. Here you can see. Here you can see uh, Swanee and Pat briefing with JR and going over some of the uh, last minute changes to the procedures. This was kind of a procedure that was not planned, obviously not an EVA that we had planned on doing, but the guys are ready for the task. And uh, Oleg Kotov here, you can see him getting the guys secured um, behind the hatch. This is the view inside the airlock as we're getting ready to, uh, to pump down to 10 to PSI, and that's the pressure that we actually uh, uh, will take uh, to our pre-breath at. One of the challenges uh, on orbit is to try and put the your gravity is helping you get yourself into the uh, lower torso assembly. But here in space, you really got to move your way into the suits. So once we're in the suits, we go through a variety of checks just to make sure that all the equipment is uh, checked out in proper configuration and uh, ready for the EVA. the suit, uh, it is a, uh, a rubberized garment which uh, contains the, uh, allows, the, allows you to have a pressurization uh, within the suit, and so you have to have 
comfort gloves in order to make sure that your hands don't get rubbed raw as you're uh, working outside. So we're going to the, the final checks before we get ready to put the guys inside the airlock. There you can see uh, Steve Swanson is ready to go, and uh, Pat Forster, his uh, EV3 is ready to go. There's Pat. Remember, my responsibility is to make sure that all the necessary procedure steps have been followed to ensure the safety of the EV crew members. Once our 10 2 deep press is complete, we have to repressurize the equipment in the crew lock back to 14-7, and uh, this allows us to put the EV crew members into the crew lock and depress the vacuum in space. And here you can see Pat Forster coming out of the airlock. This was a great spacewalk to be part of. First of all, we were going to go out and finish the task uh, for which 13A came up here, and that's to leave a, a working solo array uh, for more power for the station. Also, we had a chance to do some tasks that uh, we had done just a little training on, and it's a, a good chance for us to utilize the skills training that we receive all along. We were able to do some things that will help future spacewalks uh, and to set things up for future spacewalks. Uh, that was me uh, working on an APFR. I had to relocate that uh, from the DLA work position to the dry link kill pin work position uh, so that Pat Forster and myself could remove the drag link kill pin and allow the MT to access all the way down the truss. One of the things we did was, uh, once again, to put the uh, forge uh, in a configuration where they can begin to rotate uh, the solar rays. And we did that by removing the last remaining launch restraints, do a little bit more work on the, the drive lock assemblies. And then uh, once that was done, uh, we gave uh, Houston a go to begin their work on the ground to power it up. Yeah. task that we had on this spacewalk was to clear uh, what we call the path for the uh, mobile transporter and it's a uh, piece of equipment that can move up and down the front face of the truss. The robotic arm can ride on that and it's uh, a piece, it's, we call it the drag link kill pin. The kill pin is something that helps hold it uh, on uh, in the shuttle bay as we bring it up but once well, we get it up there we don't uh, need it anymore so here we are uh, we have uh, disconnected it, and we're rotating it into a uh, position on the interior of the truss where it will be stowed.
here's a picture of front Pat Forrester's helmet cam uh, of myself, Steve Swanson, uh, while we were working on that uh, drag link kill pin. Spacewalk is a whole lot more than the two people that are outside. It's an entire team. You've already seen Danny, who got us suited up and out the door safely. Then Jim Riley is inside the orbiter, and he is running through all the procedures and gives us instruction on uh, how to do each task, especially for an EVA like today that is just put together the day before. We haven't really practiced it as a end-to-end a, uh, -end spacewalk, and so we depend on lot on him to put us in the right place and give us the instruction that we need. One of the things people enjoy most that we bring back, since we and everyone didn't get a chance to go up there, are the pictures, and so it's important that we document those, and CJ was just taking some pictures out the window. today to uh, translate over to some areas where we hadn't been uh, very often or hadn't spent much time. And one of those is we're trying to uh, connect a cable that uh, runs from the uh, node uh, of the American uh, section over to the uh, Russian segment. And uh, the Russian uh, connector was already out there waiting. So we took a cable out there and made that connection that will help with uh, node inside the station uh, land. I also opened the uh, H2 valve that uh, Clay was working on inside and Jim Riley had been working on two days ago on his second spacewalk. Uh, it's right above the orbiter, so it was a good chance to uh, take a peek in the windows.
here's a shot of Clay finishing up uh, the tools stowage from the H2 vent task, and uh, we uh, he did a lot of leak checks and hard work over the last two days to make sure that the internal system matched up with what JR did on the external. And of course, Pat's valve throw did that. Here you see. Uh, Blue and Sonny and Danny going in to uh, get the EV crew out of the airlock once they repressurized it. After they get us in, we uh, hook ourselves up, or they, they hook us up, I should say, to uh, they're called EDAs. There are racks on the wall which the spacesuits can fit into that holds us secure while they take the spacesuits or we get out of the spacesuits. And a hearty handshake from our commander and a job well done. And here's, uh, again, Pat taking off his... LPA, again, it can be difficult without the help of gravity. There. After we got uh, the guys out of the suits, it was time for uh, CJ and I to do a little uh, O2 transfer from the shuttle and help recharge the oxygen tanks on the airlock of the station. And here you see CJ uh, reconnecting some of the lines that connect up to our high-pressure uh, recharge pump uh, called the Orca, located in the top of the uh, airlock here. And here you get a chance to see uh, CJ coming back from the shuttle. One of the best things about being in space is uh, floating in space. This was our last evening to have a, uh, we, if possibly, to have a uh, little celebration with the expedition crew. So we uh, did the traditional hanging of our uh, sticker on the uh, node wall. You can see there's a lot of uh, history there with all the other shuttle missions that have flown up here to the station. put on a different technique which worked a little better. And as the uh, station commander Fjord making a few comments about the uh, success of the mission, the recovery of the recursion, uh, Russian motion control system, and also the uh, finishing of the uh, 13A task with the S3-S4 segments. we have is uh, our EV-1 Jim Riley is hanging the sticker in the airlock. Uh, I know it's a great tradition for him because he made the first place walk out of there and one of his earlier patches is on. So we do put that sticker inside the airlock and we all get a chance to sign that. It was uh, a lot of fun. And there's CJ signing, uh, signing his name. finished uh, the uh, signing of the patch, then it was time for both crews to join together in the Russian segment. It's a Russian tradition to offer uh, foods to the uh, visiting crews, and we were happy to uh, partake with some of that. Uh, it's kind of unique, different foods that you're not, we're not used to eating, and the American uh, diet it was all good. Uh, I believe I tried uh, moose pate for the first time uh, tonight, so that was delicious. Here we are in the uh, service module, and you can see uh, there's Sonny and Oleg opening up the uh, foods. The uh, crew is uh, very happy to be finished with this uh, mission for as far as the EVA task and the major robotics out of the way. And we have just some transfer to finish up, and then we will uh, look forward to winding the mission down here with the undocking and the landing.
there's a lot of history in the uh, service module. They have uh, pictures up there from the, uh, the past missions and uh, and uh, including a picture of Yuri Gagarin, the first uh, human being to uh, fly in space. There's this picture right behind Pat. Kind of in the Russian tradition, they had a regular feast for us, just a few light snacks, as they called it, but it was uh, some terrific food, including the moose pate uh, CJ was talking about. We had olives, and, and we had some uh, sudak, and also some chicken and cheese, and, and just about anything you could think of, and had a uh, very nice meal with our uh, Russian colleagues. Those were the uh, highlights for Flight Day 10, and thanks to all the folks on the ground that helped make it possible. We do appreciate it a lot.